On June 9th, 2017, my YouTube channel surpassed 500,000 subscribers. To say my subscribers have impacted my life is simply just an understatement. I can say with confidence that I am one of the luckiest people on this planet and that I truly feel loved by so many. I've received amazing support from my friends and family throughout my entire life and now I can say that I have over half of a million people who decided to support me as well. I want to show my gratitude towards anyone who has supported me thus far. Thank you for not only changing my life, but for changing the way I view life. I've become so much more optimistic and happy in the past year, and it's all thanks to you watching. My passion and love for music is at an all-time high, and I couldn't be happier. To celebrate for passing 500,000 subscribers, I'm going to tell you guys how I got here. Here's my story. My name is Marcus Veltri, and I was born in San Antonio, Texas on December 8, 1994. Both of my parents and my sister from the very beginning were always the best support team I could ask for. Because of this, I had one of the most memorable and amazing childhoods. At the age of five, my parents signed me up for t-ball. I instantly fell in love with the sport and spent the majority of my childhood playing in leagues and playing catch with my dad. When I was around six years old, my parents bought me a Game Boy Color with Pokemon Gold. This quickly became another hobby of mine throughout my childhood and led me to play other classics like Zelda and Mario. When I was eight, I had triplets from Canada move across the street from me that were all the same age as me. We spent countless hours outside playing sports, riding scooters, and making really dumb videos that we thought were funny. When I made it to the sixth grade, my parents told me I should consider joining the band. I was nervous to join though, because at the time a lot of people didn't think it was cool, and I was tempted to only participate in sports. Luckily my parents managed to convince me to go through with it and just see if I liked it. The first day a band came around, and they had us play on a bunch of different instruments to see what we liked the best. I tried out nearly all of the instruments, and what seemed to work best for me was the trumpet. I always thought the trumpet had such a cool sound, and my band directors told me I would be a great fit for it. I decided to stick with the trumpet and see how it went. My first year playing trumpet and learning about music was an amazing and unforgettable experience. I turned out to be one of the better trumpet players in the class and made the top ensemble group for both my 7th and 8th grade year. Unfortunately, I was terrible at football and basketball. My 7th grade year I decided to join football and give it a shot, despite never playing before. I got bullied and made fun of every single day by nearly everyone around me. People at this point knew I cared a lot about music, and they all bullied me for it. They called me gay for playing an instrument, and they told me it was a waste of time. This was a story for a lot of people who did both band and sports simultaneously. These ignorant athletes were trying to tell me, along with others, that music is dumb and a waste of time. Unfortunately for them, they never got to me. After three really difficult years of getting bullied and harassed every single day for playing trumpet, middle school finally came to an end. At this point, it was time to make a huge decision. I had to decide between band and baseball. As an 8th grader who was picked on every day for being involved in music, it made it very difficult to continue music into high school. After thinking about it for a long time, I decided to sign up for baseball and just forget the fact that I was even in band. The night before our sign-up sheets were due, one of my good friends, Aaron, called me. I'll remember this phone call for the rest of my life. He also played trumpet in middle school with me and was planning on doing sports in high school instead of band as well. But when he called me, he told me we should at least try band to see if we like it. I remember telling him that I didn't want to because bullies truly made me believe music was something that wasn't cool. Despite this, he made me realize that we should at least try it for a couple of months and then we could quit if we don't like it. After a 20 minute back and forth conversation, we both decided to try band in high school. After the first year of band, I already knew I'd made the right decision and decided to quit baseball despite playing it for nearly 10 years. I made amazing friends that are still my friends to this day and I truly felt accepted into a loving community. This is also where I met my current roommate, Forrest, who plays trumpet in my videos. Forrest was easily one of the most talented musicians at that entire school, being one of the only freshmen to make the top band their first year. He was and still is a huge inspiration for me. 
My sophomore year of high school was very unforgettable for one reason in particular. This is when I discovered the piano. One day during my sophomore year of high school in 2010, I was browsing through some YouTube videos and I stumbled across Adrian Lee's piano cover of What I've Done by Linkin Park. After watching this video, I instantly knew this is something I had to learn how to do. I had to have watched this video over a hundred times within the span of just a few days. Since I was only 15 at the time, I was too young to get a job, so I didn't have any money to get a piano. I begged my dad to buy me a cheap piano just to get me started learning and to see if I even liked it. He was hesitant since I was already very involved with music at school with trumpet, but he eventually bought me my very first keyboard. I spent my first few months with this piano, practicing literally five to seven hours a day, doing everything I could to teach myself how to play. I became obsessed overnight and within the blink of an eye. My main goal was to learn how to play what I've done the exact same way Adrian Lee did. I would spend countless hours staring at his hands, memorizing which fingers hit which keys, and was slowly but surely teaching myself how to play piano. I'd always consider getting piano lessons, but for some reason I really wanted to try to teach myself how to play. After nearly six months of practicing hours every day, I perfected the cover of what I've done. It took me half a year to learn only one song, but I never had so much fun doing anything. I decided to teach myself how to read bass clef so I could start learning piano through sheet music. When my junior year came around, I decided to also take a course called AP Music Theory. Music theory in a nutshell is explaining why music sounds the way it does. I became completely obsessed with music theory. I would spend hours upon hours reading websites and teaching myself new theories outside of class. Halfway through my junior year, I realized that I wanted to pursue music in college. After visiting music colleges in Texas, I decided that the University of North Texas was my number one choice. The College of Music at UNT is considered one of the best music schools in the country and it has an acceptance rate of 25%. Seeing that I played trumpet for nearly six years by the time I was a senior, everyone assumed I was going to audition to the school on trumpet because I had only been playing the piano for one year without any lessons. Despite this, I was too passionate about piano to just give it up and I knew I wanted to pursue piano in college. My friends and my parents thought I was crazy, and they weren't sure if it was the right thing to do, given that I was still just starting to learn how to play piano. At the beginning of my senior year, I spent the next eight months only practicing my audition pieces. I was easily putting in six hours of practice every single day, despite having school and homework. When the audition rolled around in February, I had barely learned my pieces in time. When I showed up to my audition, all of the other pianists that were auditioning had been playing since they were five years old and they had been taking lessons their entire life. I was beyond nervous because this was the only way I thought I would be able to pursue a music career. After a few weeks after my audition, I got a call from the College of Music at UNT and I was accepted as a music composition major with a concentration in piano. I was beyond shocked and I actually broke into tears. After just a few days of thinking, I decided to commit to attending the College of Music at UNT to pursue my dreams of playing piano and composing for a living. The only problem I had with going to UNT to pursue music was the fact that I had a girlfriend at the time. We started dating at the beginning of my senior year and we were both going to college that next year. Unfortunately, our colleges were four hours away from each other, which was obviously gonna make it difficult for our relationship. Despite this, we decided to continue the relationship and we tried doing long distance. As much as I love my first year of being a music major, I also really missed my girlfriend, and I realized I was in love with her. I felt like a part of me was missing, being so far away from her, and it made it really difficult for me to make any new friends at UNT. I then asked her if I should drop out of music school so I could transfer to university that was closer to her and we could make everything easier. She clearly told me many times that she wanted me to continue to do music and follow my dreams. But I ended up dropping out of music school anyways and transferred schools to pursue finance and to be closer to her. This was one of the hardest decisions of my life and I still miss UNT to this day. Once I transferred schools, we only lived five minutes away from each other and we both thought it was going to be great and that everything was going to work out perfectly especially since we had made it through an entire year of long distance. 
Yet after just a few months of us being in the same city, we had to break up. And this is what truly got to me. I lost her. I didn't have any friends because it was a brand new university. I instantly regretted dropping out of music school and leaving my dreams behind. I missed my old university. I felt alone and depressed for an entire year. I did absolutely nothing in my spare time except for sleeping. I had practically stopped playing piano, only playing a couple times a week. On top of this, my old roommate and I got into a huge fight after my breakup with my girlfriend. We didn't talk to each other for the rest of the eight months we lived with each other. I didn't know what to do at this point, and I honestly just felt worthless. Once the beginning of my junior year rolled around, my roommate who I was on bad terms with moved out, and Forrest decided to move in with me. This is when things started to look up for me. I started to slowly start playing piano again and actually care about music. When I was a freshman at UNT, one of my friends introduced me to beatboxing. I thought it was one of the most unreal things I had ever seen. I slowly but surely got into beatboxing for the next two years and then really started to learn at the beginning of my junior year when Forrest moved in. I already had a very small YouTube channel at the time for piano tutorials and covers and decided I wanted to implement beatboxing into the channel somehow. I was having trouble deciding what to do with beatboxing because the few hundred subscribers I did have at the time were subscribed to me only for piano. And one day I thought, I should try doing them together, that way everybody is happy. I tried it and it was by far the most difficult thing I had ever tried to do. Yet I thought it had so much potential if it was done well. After nearly six months of non-stop practice and hard work, I managed to upload my first piano beatbox cover, which was the Super Mario Bros. theme. I showed my mom and my friends, and most of them didn't really understand what I was trying to do. Most people just told me to go back to just playing piano. But there was just something about piano beatboxing to me that made me feel so happy and accomplished when I learned a new song. I imagined even changing the sounds of the keyboard to synths and creating full songs with the beatboxing replacing the drums. Even though everyone close to me was telling me they weren't crazy about the new art form, I decided to keep doing it simply because I thought it was cool. I kept doing it and eventually my channel began to grow. Right before I hit 10,000 subscribers, a YouTuber known as Ask a Gangsta reached out to me and said he wanted to upload one of my videos to his channel, which had 800,000 subscribers at the time. He loved my content from the beginning and he really wanted to help my channel out. I agreed and said yes and let him upload one of my newest Omega videos at the time. This video managed to take off and accumulate nearly 5 million views and is currently one of Ask a Gangsta's most popular videos. Without Ask a Gangsta, I'm not sure if I would be in the same position that I'm in right now, and I'm forever grateful for everything he has given me. It's insane for me to think that this channel hit 5,000 subscribers only a year ago, and now we have grown past 500,000 subscribers during this time. I genuinely feel like the world loves me and is always pushing me forward to do great things and I couldn't be more thankful. Now that I've shared my past with you, I'm even more excited to share my future with you. I want to do live performances, public videos, bigger collabs, and really continue to improve my art form as much as possible. Thank you so much for supporting my dream and turning it into a reality.